Erling Haaland, his flaxen locks are waving in the nighttime Mancunian breeze as uh, he waved goodbye to Arsenal, uh, who just kind of clawed their way almost back into the game with a goal from Rob Holding that made it 3-1. But uh, Duncan, you're wincing at me because this was a game that was never in doubt from for many people before it even started, but certainly from a couple of minutes in when Kevin De Bruyne scored that wonderful opening goal. Yeah, and before that, City had a penalty shout, um, oh, yeah. which was pretty strong. I think with the room was split here. I thought it looked like a penalty. Tom and, and James didn't. But um, there's BT Sport, you know, straight in for the <laughs> totally, <laughs> totally irrelevant <laughs> penalty well, decision. But it had no, no bearing on the rest of the game. What I'm trying to do, Tom, is illustrate how good a start it was from City, and they were straight on sure. the front foot. Mm. Well, Kevin um, De Bruyne. Yes. Yeah. Scored a great goal. Very route one. I mean, we, we remember in the previous in the reverse game at, at Arsenal, they City went quite long in that game, um, and they repeated the trick here. Haaland flicking on. Big man with a with a little terrier feeding off scraps. But actually, it was Kevin De Bruyne bending a, a beautiful goal mm. past um, uh, past Aaron Ramsdale. And yeah, I mean, f- pretty much. It's weird because this game's been built up as such a massive game, but it was over from that moment really. And it, you know, it never really took on that sort of epic title battle that I think some of the City Liverpool games have had in mm. recent seasons. It was more a, a, a question of. The, or, a, sorry, it was more a question of regarding this kind of city masterclass in, in awe. And it was more a question of just marvelling at this magnificent Man City performance and the kind of dogged rearguard performance led by Ramsdale, which kept it 2-1-0 right up until just before the halftime whistle, Tom. Yeah, and Arsenal looked like they'd kind of got away with it in the sense that they had been battered, but looked like they were going to be going in um, with only a one-goal deficit. Um, even after John Stone's header was uh, initially chalked off. But then, of course, VAR spotted that, that Ben White's foot was uh, where it, it shouldn't have been. And, and City ended up going in with uh, an advantage that you know, didn't even reflect to the extent of their, of their dominance, really. I mean, 2-0 wasn't a bad scoreline for Arsenal, given how, how uh, comprehensively they've been out, outplayed. But, yeah, that, that second goal... And particularly the the timing of it, the circumstances of it, I think that probably did um, take away any real hope that Arsenal might have had of, of mounting a fight back in the second half. And I think, yeah, just to echo what Duncan was saying about the nature of that first goal in particular, this, uh, you know, it, it felt very typical of this, this new city mm. that we've been, you know, getting familiar with the last few weeks. They are a much more direct team than, than previous city teams. And it was... It was a brilliant City performance, but it was it was a very, very different City performance to the ones we've been used to seeing in recent years, where they just don't give their opponents a kick. I mean, possession was sort of broadly 50-50 again. I think City might have slightly shaded it, but in keeping with the way they played against Bayern Munich in the Champions League, I think the real strength of this particular iteration of City is that they are absolutely exceptional without the ball. Um, and, you know, we saw that mm. again. In an evening of, of seamless excellence, did anyone stand out for you in particular? I get the, the De Bruyne Haaland double act, and we're used to seeing De Bruyne, you know, putting goals on a plate for for Erling Haaland. We hadn't really seen it um, the other way around so much, um, and yes, yeah, some of it was, you know, was quite conventional big man, little man stuff. Particularly that first goal, um, you know, Haaland, um, you know, sort of dropping deeper to. To, to, to win the first ball and, and, and De Bruyne running beyond him. Um, and again, just to go back to that first goal, I mean, it comes from John Stones with a kind of, you know, lofted pass slash agricultural hoof, the kind of thing that we used to think was as anathema to Pep Guardiola. Actually, this, 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 you know, current City team have no qualms about just getting the ball forward quickly. Um, and, and, it, and it worked a treat. And I think that was, you know, something that, that Arsenal failed to get to grips with throughout. We should point out that John Stones, unlike recent games when he has been operating as a sort of auxiliary midfielder, was back in his traditional centre centre back role, and it was a back four and, and hitting the big man. It was you know pure heritage at points. Um, Harlan with two assists mm. that takes him to seven for the season, which um, I remembered uh, matches Paul Scholes' best ever total in a single Premier League campaign. So that's from not just goals. Um, also, assists. where where does he stand for goals though? Where are we now on the so he's up to, because he scored one at the end, as mm. you say, with his hair flowing. Mm. Um, 
That takes him to 33 in the Premier League, which is a new record for any player in a 38-game season. And it takes him, historically, to 49. Right. Overall. Historically? Because Clive Allen did it for Spurs in 1987, didn't have hair like Haaland, as far as I can remember. Um, and it kind of that's kind of stood as this kind of high watermark of goal scoring in you know in modern, I guess modernish English football. So for Haaland to do it with plenty of games left to uh, to hunt down Dixie Dean sixty three, which is the all time record, um, sixty in the league, three in the FA Cup, none in the League Cup or Europe for Dean, um, largely because they didn't exist. So um, we'll lay him off. But um, yeah, I mean, I think the is Haaland making City worse. Uh, chat has definitely possibly gone forever. What chat? I don't remember that chat. No, I don't remember it. No. <laughs> Who had a chat like that? So, uh, ooh, what does the Opta computer say about the title probability now? Um, I think it's up to about 93% City 93 now. So, City, the, yeah. you know, we are sort of, it was strange at the end of the game because everyone was almost, you know, I think some people would have happily handed City the, the trophy there and then, but they are still second. Right. They are two points. Um, behind Arsenal, but the computer says ninety three percent. Yeah, because they Why got two that? games in hand. Okay, so but it's kind of weird because we are. To, it's the end of April, mm -hmm. and I think we're conditioned to, in our sort of seasonal muscle memory to think that this is pretty much the end of the season. But because of the World Cup, we've still got you know six or seven games for most teams, and um, Arsenal still have six or seven percentage points of yeah, chance yeah. that they could still take this title. What what does this do to Arsenal though? We've had the the draws against lesser, in inverted commas, opponents. And now we've had this schooling and slightly averted spanking at the hands of City. What's that I mean, going to leave? Where's that going to leave them? I think most Arsenal fans I could see online, Twitter and stuff, were pretty philosophical about tonight. But the players, you know, they've, they've had this dream that's driven them on. Well, I think they'd have got to that point in the last few games. I think the West Ham draw and the, and the Southampton one. I mean, you know, to relinquish six points, if they had... If they'd have got those six points, they could have gone to City tonight and lost and still had it in their hands. So, mm. so yeah, I think they looked a little bit overawed, but you'd expect that at the Etihad, I guess. I don't think tonight's going to make it any worse for them. Okay. Um, and I think the, a, a good, you know, sort of, um, or rather a, a, a positive consequence for Arsenal of the fact that this game is taking place or has taken place when it did is that they've got another month of football to play now where they know they're probably not going to win the league. Mm. They've already got Champions League yeah. in the bag. That, uh, that was confirmed. confirmed. Which, which, which was confirmed tonight. And you think pre-season, an awful lot of people weren't even predicting Arsenal to make top four. Mm. I mean, you know, no one saw them competing for the title race, but an awful lot of people, you know, myself included, thought they would really struggle to, to make top four. So they've, they've had an incredible season. One positive for Arsenal is that this game took place uh, when it did um, and not, you know, the sort of penultimate game of the season. There's another month of Premier mm. League football still to come. Um, they're probably not going to win the league, but they have, as of this evening, confirmed Champions League qualification, which mm. before the season started, an awful lot of people thought would probably prove beyond them. And it means that they now have the opportunity to get back to winning ways, you know, play some nice football again and and bring this absolutely remarkable season that they've had to a, a positive conclusion. Hello there. If you've enjoyed this video, why not subscribe to this channel? The Totally Football Show podcast is available three times a week, bringing you all the football news you could reasonably be expected to care about. We've got views, we've got stats, we've got analysis, we've got some of the best football writers around and the whole thing is absolutely free. So have a listen on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or all the usual places by clicking on the link below.